shields. Fallen shields are down to 15%. Wouldn't this be a good time to cloak? The cloaking system's fried! One of the things that I enjoy regarding Star Trek is that the show is so nuanced, so intricate, that we can break down nearly everything that is seen on television. Whether it is a discussion on the broad strokes of the Dominion War or to the individual character breakdowns, we can gain so much knowledge about the Federation and even how Starfleet works. And one of the most unlikely aspects of Starfleet that tells us so much about their mentality is, believe it or not, how Starfleet designs the bridge layouts. Whether you are looking at an exploration variant of the Galaxy class, the deep space research layout we see in Voyager, or the militaristic design of the original series and Deep Space Nine, we are given a lot of direct and indirect information on operations and battle tactics by Starfleet's Admiralty. Before I get too far into it, let me be clear, I'm going to attempt to discuss a majority of the bridges that are reflected in all of the ships. Not just a bridge, then its variant, and then the variant after that. But if you think I miss one, it's likely because I thought it was too similar to one of the ones I'm going over, or it's a transitional layout that doesn't add much. But if you like this video and want to see more, then definitely remember that engagement and how much we're talking in the comments really does impact what kind of videos come up on this channel. Speaking of the bridge design, we will have to accept that Starfleet designs may not make a lot of sense from a militaristic standpoint, at least not pragmatically. The bridge is overly exposed, the entirety of the command staff usually work together in the same shift, and there's no secondary CIC where other officers can take over. It's just a given that this is how the universe works in Trek. Additionally, the bridge is located at the very top of most vessels, or in front. The reasoning for this is because Starfleet builds its ships with a modular bent in mind. The bridge module is meant to easily be replaced, and so putting them in the bowels of the vessel could make that complicated. Because transporter technology isn't a thing, I guess. Additionally, one person handles the entire scope of a ship's function, from operations to navigation. One officer decides all of the decisions and is in a vulnerable area. While we're here, let's break all the stations down so there's no confusion. While it would only see use from the mid-22nd century to the early to mid-23rd century, the communication station was initially vital to the captains of these earlier eras. The bridge station was generally situated to the very back of the bridge and was manned by personnel with advanced knowledge of linguistics and oral... <clears throat> and did I not on multiple occasions demonstrate an exceptional oral sensitivity acumen. Before the basic magical properties of the Universal Translator existed, an officer that was not only trained in most known languages, but was able to decipher new languages from unknown species, was critical to the survival of the ship. Alongside communications would be engineering. While the chief engineering officer would spend most of his time in actual engineering, the senior officer, or a lower ranking personnel to be honest, could man this station and be able to control vital ship functions directly. This would cut down the need for the captain to contact engineering, though they still did it. Like, all the time. This sentient being would be able to reroute power, control warp core output, and all other functions related to the lifeblood of the vessel. Among the stations often considered auxiliary, science would generally be grouped with these. While somewhat self-explanatory, the science station is utilized for study and research of the wonders of the universe. While purported to be the main purpose of Starfleet, it is really odd to note that science is often tucked away with only junior officers manning the station on a bridge. The vessels themselves would have a myriad of labs throughout, but on the bridge, it was a station that was, again, in the background. That said, it would be the science station, or science officer, that assisted during combat situations, more times than not, when the other bridge stations appeared to be lacking. Please let me shoot their warp core. I have been very good this month. Evasive pattern, Sulu Alpha. Oh, come on! One of the most talked about roles on the bridge, and most seen, is that of tactical. This is where the teeth of Starfleet vessels lie. The officer, often both head of tactical and security, is able to control the offensive and defensive systems of the vessel. Vital information regarding the status of enemy vessels and often damage control are routed through this station. In most configurations, navigation is set to the fore of the bridge, right in front of the view screen. In all but the Discovery era, this makes little sense. 
Yeah, yeah, we'll get into that in a minute. Given that the view screen largely doesn't show the outside of the vessel from a steering perspective, the station literally could be anywhere. But irregardless of reasoning, navigation would include both the ability to chart where the ship was as well as control it. Officers at navigation, often still called pilots, would both navigate where to go and then ensure the ship gets there. This can also include during combat situations, though it was possible for tactical to take over. There are times when navigation is separated from helm in some bridge configurations, but that wasn't the norm. But when it does happen, we'll note it. All of these stations would filter through operations. While it does seem that different bridge officers shared duties in some configuration, the operations officer appears to be a step up from most of them. In fact, it is considered a promotion over that of navigation or helm. Operations handles everything from long-range sensors to identifying life forms. The station also can handle the duties of everything that I've mentioned before, creating a backup if another officer is incapacitated or that console goes down. This all ultimately does lead into the commanding officer's chair, or console. With the ability to override any system on the ship, the commander, or captain, is able to access anything that is necessary to ensure that the mission continues. Effectively, all of these stations work together as the brain of the vessel and ensure its continued operation. The officers in charge make life and death decisions every day, and so making sure you have the right person for the job is critical. With most of the major stations out of the way, let's take a look at some of the designs, from the best to the worst. We need a virus that takes advantage of a trusting system! We've already created three viruses that would disable PacLed technology. You're monitoring comms? Oh, I'm always monitoring comms. If you're like me, you know that the overthrow of Starfleet and complete conquering of the Federation can be time-consuming if not cumbersome. You never want to be a pack led when destroying the communist utopia. That's why I use Surfshark VPN to safeguard all of my tactical systems. Surfshark VPN keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all of the information sent between your device and the internet. Surfshark VPN also has 3,200 servers in over 65 countries. That means once you've defeated Starfleet Command, you can travel to British-controlled France and change it so that it shows you are in the States to watch your favorite Netflix movies. If you act quick and go to surfshark.deals forward slash lore, you can get 83% off plus three extra months for free. You can also get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's absolutely no risk. Check in the description below to get all of these great deals. Again, surfshark.deals forward slash lore for 83% off. Check them out now. Supporting the sponsors supports the channel. That's one down. Can we shake the other three? I tried. From everything that can be observed, probably one of the best bridge designs and most streamlined layouts is that of the USS Defiant. While having the distinction of being one of the first ships to return to a wartime mentality in Starfleet, its layout is one focused on efficiency. The captain is in the middle, and they are able to see and easily communicate to all crew around them. Additionally, should she need to see what's occurring more clearly, she is able to easily move from her chair to that of the station she has her sights on. To the for the captain is a console that handles helm, navigation, and operations. While this would be a lot, a competent officer can more efficiently process all of the information, see how the ship is faring, and respond in real time without the need of someone else. Arguably, this would be the most vital station as it encompasses three and one. To the captain's right is Tactical One and Science. While Science is given a few screens, Tactical One has multiple panels allowing the officer to identify threats along with knowing how the ship's health is. This station is so expansive that it's almost like a mini cubicle with everything needed for the survival of the vessel. To the left of the captain is Auxiliary Tactical along with Engineering. Given that space is at a premium on the Defiant class vessel, often overall engineering operations would be handled from right here. Additionally, the Auxiliary Tactical Station allows two different officers to handle different aspects of the defense of the ship or provides a backup should one of the officers becomes incapacitated or the station explodes. Directly in front of the captain's chair is the view screen on which things are viewed. This will be a standard for most vessels, so get used to hearing me say that over and over. A somewhat unique aspect of the bridge that isn't seen on most other Starfleet ships is the port agress. Not only are environmental systems located here, but a table with panels, consoles, and holometers that allow the crew to plan operations directly from 
from the bridge is present. It also works as a small meeting place for discussion of current strategy or next steps. It wouldn't be any surprise to see that if the Define is one of the most efficient and best bridges Starfleet has to offer, then the NX class bridge would also be in competition. This isn't a cheat either, we do know some form of this layout was adopted by the early Federation Starfleet Admiralty. Though that said, the design is somewhat lacking in comparison to the Defiant. The captain's chair is in the middle, and he'd be able to easily talk and discuss what is occurring with the various crew from the other stations. To the captain's right would be Tactical. The station has its own dedicated area with several displays and controls. Right next to Tactical is Engineering. Given the relative rudimentary systems of the time, this station would be crewed by junior officers. To the left of the captain is both Science and Communications. While Communications would be the privy of Tactical or Operations, in the Defiant layout and most future designs, the lack of a universal translator at the time meant that a dedicated officer was necessary. We've discussed that before. The science officer, who often acted as the executive officer, would also have an expanded role and assist with tasks related to operations. Directly in front of the captain would be navigation and helm. The helm console was dedicated to only steering the ship, both in regular and extreme situations, as well as during combat. In front of both the helm and captain would be wait for it, the view screen. Unlike the Defiant layout, the NX would have a dedicated situation room that would be used for surveys and operations, but it was connected to the bridge, not a part of it. The next is going to be possibly a bit of a controversial pick, but I'm all about being honest. No other Federation vessel would have a chance of pulling this off. Just us. Because mark my words, you will look back proudly and tell the world you were there the day the USS Discovery saved Pavel and ended the Klingon War. I would have to say that beyond the Defiant, the most efficient and the bridge most likely to cause the least amount of death would be that of the USS Shinzu and the USS Discovery. Yeah, I know. So the layouts on both of these vessels are similar, so I'm only going to focus on the USS Discovery for right now. The USS Discovery is, of course, a cross-filled class, and as with every layout, the captain sits in the middle with the stations in front and to the side, but they do have the added bonus of the captain having some consoles behind him as well. To the right of the captain would be communications and a secondary station that was used for major scientific endeavors. Ironically, this would be the only bridge layout that really put a focus on science. In the case of the Discovery, this would be where Spore Ops was located, which would allow for instantaneous travel. To the left of the officer is primary science operations, engineering, and tactical. Directly in front of the captain is actual operations and navigation. With the exception of primary science operations, I really do like this layout. Most all of the officers have their own cubicle-like space, which allows for multiple panels and allows them to completely run whatever they need to do. The more information and control an officer has at their station, the more fluid they can be in handling whatever they need to handle. A major change for Starfleet would be the use of the quote-unquote windows versus that of the view screen. And let me be honest with you, I have to admit, before I started doing this, I was always of the opinion that the windows were stupid and we didn't need to have them. That said, I always try to do a bit of research in every video, and so I looked at how it was done in the actual military, and I also looked at the feasibility of these windows and if they made sense, and yeah, they do. So let's break that down. We know that Starfleet doesn't actually use glass for its starship, regardless of what generations will have you believe. They utilize transparent metals. So we aren't actually trading out glass for protective armament. So when it comes to the actual armor on the ship that protects you, this isn't a problem. Also, secondary systems such as force fields, transporter technology, and more would mean that a direct hit to this section of the ship doesn't mean that it's the death knell for everyone. In fact, the more I watch Star Trek and the more I analyze real life, the more I realize how absolutely necessary windows are needed. They're actually more useful than view screens. While relying on navigation, sensors, and tactical systems are vital for a ship to survive, these systems can fail. If for any reason your short range and long range sensors go down, or you lose all power to those subsystems, the ability to see outside by just looking is necessary. Hell, we see this in some TNG episodes. If you can have windows without them having to be glass, why would you not do that? The only criticism I still posit is to suggest that they have blast doors in case something really, really stupid happens. Ultimately, I think that every ship should probably have windows like the Discovery-era vessels, but 
that's just me. From here, we're going to notice a change from efficiency and relative safety to a more laid-back mentality. Love Boat Phil. That said, I'm still a fan of the layout of the Intrepid class. The Intrepid would combine the less efficient design of the Galaxy class with the more pragmatic design of the Defiant and Crossfield. The captain and executive officer are in the middle with controls that allow them to manipulate the ship if they wanted to. Directly in front, we have navigation, though it does seem like this console shares both operations and navigation navigation responsibilities. To the right and four of the captain is the engineering duty station. Like we see with other layouts, this is usually manned by a junior officer with the chief engineer in, wait for it, engineering. To the right and the back is the tactical station. Like in other designs, this has a cubicle-like feel. It allows the officer to take full advantage of all of the different offensive and defensive systems that he has available to him. To the left and to the front of the captain is science, and to the right back is... Well, it's operations. Both operations and tactical are possibly two of the most important parts of the ship, and thus having them both in a cubicle-like style makes a lot of sense. However, it can make things difficult if an officer is incapacitated or other officers have to quickly move to the station to take over. As you can see, the captain trying to get from the captain's chair to operations could be a problem. Like in most designs, a view screen is directly in front of them all. The next we will be looking at is the USS Enterprise. No bloody A, B, C, or D. We're also looking at the classical variant, not the modern version. The bridge layout is one of barrenness, to be sure. The captain sits in the middle. In front of him are both con and helm. There is also a command console in the very middle between them. Interestingly, while there are other panels that control tactical, the navigation system would seem to have the ability to control offensive and defensive systems and was the most relied on. Panels line the walls all the way from one side to the other, with the only break being for the view screen. While these consoles are mostly interconnected, they do have different functions. To the right, four of the captain would be the defense and weapons subsystems, along with science and the library computer core. Directly behind the captain, for some strange reason, would be communications. To the left of the captain would include engineering systems, environmental systems, and engineering subsystems. Like the Defiant, the captain is able to see all of the systems around him, as well as having the main control system in front. However, the bridge would also have handrails between the captain and the various consoles. While this does make sense, just in case the ship is attacked and they get flung from one side to the other, it would also slow down the captain or any other officer that was attempting to help. This all leads to what is possibly the absolute worst layout that has ever been thought of by Starfleet engineers. Specifically, I'm talking about the Enterprise D, or as others know it, the Love Boat. Efficiency was not particularly something they focused on. The captain is in the middle, flanked by both his first officer and counselor for some reason. The controls, presumably on all of these different chairs, have command access. In front of the captain, on either side, we have both navigation and operations. The navigation officer also has helm control, and behind the captain is tactical, in which the officer has to be constantly standing for shifts that are likely eight hours or more. And if the captain has a question or needs something, he has to look back to see the officer. Behind the tactical officer are a few various consoles that include engineering, science, and a panel that could be used for operations if necessary. A large view screen sits in front of them all, and the stations are far away from each other, with the captain only being able to see both operations and navigation. The battle bridge isn't much better, seeming to be just more a condensed version of the regular bridge with, you know, nav and operations in front and other systems in back. It doesn't seem like the mentality really was focused on how to best serve the crew or protect the ship. I know there are quite a few that I've missed here, the Enterprise E, the Enterprise C, the Ceratos, and others. As I stated, these are arguably transitional bridges. I guess it'll depend on you guys, as I stated. Do you want to see more? If so, hopefully the engagement proves it. If not, that works too. Either way, let me know what you think in the comments about the bridge layouts. What's best, what works great, what doesn't. Let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and remember guys, all of our lives are a story. Make yours a good one.